Dithony, a widow here, the internet's busiest music nerd. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Eh, it's time for a review of the new Bat for Lashes record, The Bride. This is the latest full-length LP from singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, <laughs> Natasha Khan, aka Bat for Lashes, and this is her fourth full-length album, I believe. And if I recall correctly, I enjoyed her last full-length album quite a bit. I also liked her vocal input on that recent uh, Sex Witch EP slash album. If you're in the mood for some very occult and heavy psychedelic rock, I recommend checking that out. But Bat for Lashes is an entirely different vibe. However, a equally good one. Under this moniker, Natasha delivers this dramatic and sometimes dreamy art and synth pop, pulling pretty heavily from artists like Kate Bush and Bjork. And now, on this new record over here, she's working the whole theatrical, dramatic angle even harder, as this record features a concept about a bride who loses her beloved on their wedding day. So right from the get-go, we know we have a protagonist on this album who is going through an incredible amount of suffering. And this story, this concept, even though it looks big and ambitious on paper, somehow this album ended up being Natasha's most underwhelming record yet. And sadly, it has much to do with the music, which is just really not up to par in comparison with previous Bat for Lashes records. This thing is just, for my taste, too sparse. It's too low key. Natasha is already not one of the loudest art and synth pop artists out there. I wouldn't exactly call a lot of her singing emotionally potent anyway. You know, she's a capable singer, but she's not known for these heart-wrenching vocal performances or anything. So we're taking her already subtle style and toning it down even further, and the result is a series of very patience-testing tracks. The intro cut I do is understandably quiet and beautiful, though. I love the omnichord chords, if that is an omnichord on this cut. Uh, it sounds beautiful against her wonderful voice. And the song Joe's Dream right after, even though it is very spacey and it is very slow-paced, uh, it still ramps the momentum of the record up a little bit, and it does a good job of setting the narrative tone of the album. But then as the track listing rolls on, I'm getting this feeling that the record is really missing something. And I think that is just a little more musical oomph, a little more emotional fire from these vocal performances, like on the song In God's House, where the singing is just far too mild. The synthetic instrumental here, especially with the bass line and the percussion, is really, really redundant. The song Honeymooning Alone as well, which is just screaming for a passionate vocal performance, especially given how spacey the instrumental is. It certainly had room for it, but it just doesn't have it. The song could have been just a tear-jerking, moonlit confessional, but it's really just not. Sunday Love, maybe my favorite track on the entire record, does a good job of not just picking up the pace, but also has uh, some driving synth bass and percussion. The vocals are just a little bit more lively, but then the record only gets more sparse and underwhelming from there. The very folky Never Forgive the Angels moves at a glacial pace. The song Close Encounters has one of the better vocal melodies on the entire record, but the lone ethereal string sections that back up Natasha's voice are not enough to make the track musically satisfying. And the even spacier Widow's Peak, which features uh, some even quieter instrumentation and some spoken word, like whispered passages from Natasha, uh, I get that she's really heavy on the narrative on this one, but there's just so little thus far on the record that is musically entertaining that it would even justify slowing things down even further into a track of this flavor. The protagonist on this record is going through an incredible amount of emotional anguish, and yet the singing on this record and the music on this record is so measured, it's so flat, it's so stoic, it's not exactly enthralling. A few tracks here and there do get louder as they progress, but the intensity is so faint that there's very little in the way of payoff. I'm just really not sure what to say about this record. I'm pretty indifferent toward it. You know, I do like the concept. There are some cool vocal melodies on this thing. I think there were some interesting songs penned 
on this record, but the vocal performances and the very bare instrumentals are just doing nothing for me. Like on the song I Will Love Again, one of the better vocal melodies on the record, good chord progression, and given the lyrics of the track, could have been a pop anthem, could have been a triumphant moment for the record, but instead it's just instrumentally drab, just as underwhelming as any other moment on the record. You'd think that given this record is a story, that the instrumentation would try to tell that story with emotional highs and emotional lows. I'm feeling a strong 4 to a light 5 on this record. Transition. Have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry if you're pissed off at me over this review. <sighs> Anthony Fantano, Back for Lashes, The Bride, Forever.